when I get the songs, and it's still technically in demo form, whilst transcribing it, I might make a few mistakes because I can't hear very clearly what his chords are and the voicings, and also guitar voicings, keyboard voicings, so totally different, the approach. They sound so different. And I'm not a guitar player, so I don't know the kind of tricks right, for a voicing. But also in, in making these mistakes, I come up with happy accidents. Because I go, oh, hang on, that's actually cool. Four is for the one who thinks that one and one makes five steps on the sun. Probably roughly half the songs were written um, on piano. I mean, I just go to the piano and I have my iPhone and if something's cool, I just start recording. And then if I liked it, just immediately mic it up, bring my little 8-track, I always work with an 8-track, record the song, then uh, throw some bass on it uh, so it sounds full, and then I really try to give it a thorough drumming, which is my most uh, favorite part of making the song. Um, I try to just make sure it's groove and it's feeling great, and I can imagine that Simon will do all kinds of really cool things with it. <laughs> Part of this, I think, that I enjoyed was the fact that I could really feel um, Simon Phillips' stamp on this. I know that he's overseeing these, this project and he's also playing drums. And so there was, I think there was more odd time stuff, at least it, particularly in solo sections for me this time, which was actually really cool. It, you know, very reminiscent sometimes of, you know, I've worked with Simon with Protocol. And so, you know, you can't fall asleep at the wheel during those sections, right? You've got to really bring yourself, you got to focus. Uh, you can't just rely on your go-tos and then, yeah, I'll just do this. You've got to really sit up straight. A hundred years we have had a blast working with each other and uh, working with uh, a producer, arranger, composer, drummer like Simon Phillips is like a dream come true and every time we come together there's so much space for improvisation and he allows me to bring to the table something different something unique something out of the box and he doesn't restrict me uh, and he doesn't just ask me to stick to what's there he allows me the freedom to uh, stretch it a little bit and expound on the ideas that Darwin gives us. And I think there is something about coming together in one place and making that music live, playing and recording together. There is some magic, there's some element that just stands out. And I hope you can feel the enjoyment that we had through these songs. Actually, a lot of the writing for the songs was inspired by the end of a song from the first album, Origin of Species, called Forever. The end of Forever, or the very end, um, is this kind of like, I don't know, two minute, three minute long jam that kind of builds and builds and builds and I kept coming back to it for other ideas. Now on the new album, we have a song that kind of borrows from that, but the voicing is very different. I think probably most people wouldn't even know that um, there's a little bit of relationship uh, between those songs, you know, Forever from the first album and now Five Steps from the Sun on the new album in the chorus. One of the toughest things that takes the longest part about you know, Darwin's idea of harmony sandwiches, the lost art of harmonies all over the place, you kind of really taught me about when you're singing a harmony part, why do you put a note in there that's already sung on the lead vocal? Right. When you're moving a vocal on a harmony and yeah. you do the same note, it's like wasting space, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So we spend most of our time, I think, when we do the editing of what, the vocals, yeah. just making sure we're not doing that. And that's yeah. hard. I mean, yeah. that's meticulous. Yeah. And then, um, very interestingly, um, when I came here uh, to the studio at Powerplay, and we were in the studio, Mohini had gotten into town, came up with an idea for another song on the album, which is only um, the piano playing, 
And Greg Howe kind of adapted the chorus section of Five Steps from the Sun to do this kind of unique, really pared down thing. It's just in three, like the chorus of uh, Five Steps from the Sun. I think you're totally entitled to borrow from your songs and weave them together. And we have um, basically three songs on this album that are all kind of related to each other. And so they have similar names. The main song, I think, would be Five Steps from the Sun. Um, then we have this kind of interlude thing um, that hopefully will be really interesting on the album because it's like only a minute and a half long, but it's, it's very, um, very emotional, I think very sensitive. Um, and then there's like a big instrumental um, called The Sun, which um, also kind of relates to those other parts, but it's a very different part. The beauty about music is that you can tell a story with your music. Some just say it, and some will say it with a lot of passion and love and strong intention. And I feel like when Darwin writes his songs, he writes it with strong intentions and you can really feel it. You can feel the big personality that comes through One Step on the Sun, Five Steps on the Sun, and the Sun. All of these three songs have really big personalities on its own, but together they tell a bigger story. It sounds, uh very uh, Simon Phillips. Sounds almost like it could be on a Protocol album. And in writing it, that was really what I was thinking. That was probably the first song that I wrote for the album way back in the beginning of the COVID days. And this is when I was only accessing uh, pianos in like hotel lobbies or places where you were like very distanced from other people. But I, I think I had roughly like 80% of it, but I went to Simon and uh, said, you know, can you do something with this? I feel like we've got a good song, but I'm not really sure how you write these instrumental things and how it ends and how it starts. There's a really cool part to the end of that song that came up, actually, it just kind of evolved. We had Mohini doing this part with the bass and then um, Jesse, Julian just kind of layered in over that. It just came out of this very simple pattern that I had um, said to Simon, I want this in the song, but I'm not sure where to put it in. It's a really pretty end of the song where it's like you think the song is over, but then this final section kind of builds and it, it like grows and you're like, oh man, that's like beautiful. Everybody sees it differently, I see it differently, Simon sees it differently, Darwin sees it differently, but when we come together in that one room and are creating something together, we have one goal, which is to feel that intention, to feel that story, to feel that power, and we want you to feel the same. Mm -hmm. 